microphone. Is, is, yeah, the microphone's on. <laughs> you ready there, um, Sam? Yes. Okay, I'm going to start. I'd like to open up the workshop on uh, community soil, solar and uh, have a presentation by Jewel, by Charlotte Brims. From, she's a director of community outreach, Jewel Community Power. It's something which I think will give us a benefit financially to each resident in saving money on their electric bill. And she will go through the process of how you do it and the benefits and what it's all about. So with that, I introduce Charletta. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Just gonna sneak through here. Um, so yeah, I'm Charlotte Benz from Jewel Assets, Jewel Community Power. We are the program administrators behind Hudson Valley Community Power. Um, we're part of three partnership uh, entities that make up Hudson Valley Community Power. The first is the uh, municipalities themselves, which is um, six is turned to nine, and with you guys it'll be ten. That's Poughkeepsie. Uh, Fishkill, Marbletown, Phillipstown, Cold Spring, um, now the town and village of New Paltz have joined, and Red Hook, and now you guys in the spring. So it's very exciting, it's growing. Um, and you know, the bigger the aggregation, you know, we have more leverage and negotiations for energy. Um, so Jewel Community Power is a program administrator for these programs. We worked with the state to create the pilot program and really have been at the forefront of these community energy programs in New York uh, from the get-go and are constantly working with the state to evolve them as well to make them more empowering for municipalities. We really work for municipalities as consultants to find uh, opportunities to get to 100% renewable and save money. That's really our mission. We're focused on reducing carbon emissions and electricity prices at the same time. Um, and then the third entity in this partnership uh, is Hudson Valley Energy. That's Jeff Demansky, who was here presenting maybe a month ago. Um, we always partner with a local nonprofit on the ground in all of our aggregations in different regions because we want someone there doing education, outreach, customer support um, in the community. Can you go to the next slide? So there are two program offerings in Hudson Valley Community Power. Both of them achieve the goals I described earlier. They are both um, reducing carbon emissions for New York and electricity prices for our customers. Um, the two programs are Community Choice Aggregation, or CCA, and Community Solar. Uh, they overlap in that mission, as I described, and also in that uh, functionally, they are the supply side of electricity. Um, they're where your dollars are going in the energy market, but it's different from the delivery and transmission of electricity, which will continue to be Central Hudson. That is a constant. Central Hudson is responsible for poles, wires, making sure you can turn your lights on. They send a bill no matter what. That's the case. The difference between the two programs is that community choice aggregation works on behalf of the aggregate, on behalf of all the residents within a municipality who have not chosen an energy supply company. If they've signed with an ESCO, they've already got a contract for that, but most people don't. 80% of the population stays with the default. In this case, Central Hudson chooses who the default supply, where the default supply comes from. Those are the people that we will then be buying energy for. And that's what makes it really powerful. It's 80% of the population who are not doing anything about this. We are able to negotiate um, for them the same way that an institution negotiates in the market. We have the same kind of leverage and clout uh, to get a good deal, to get 100% renewable energy and savings at the same time. That's what makes CCA so powerful. Um, community Solar is a parallel and complementary program. It is additive, um, but it's not on, on behalf of the many. It's individuals have to choose to participate. So CCA is an opt-out program. So if you don't do anything, you're in. You can always opt out, but the default is that you're in. With Community Solar, you have to step forward, sign a contract, enroll, make the decision. 
Um, and it's a different kind of savings. It's state-enabled solar credits that are guaranteed on your bill. Um, and I'll talk about that a bit more if you want to go to the next slide. Um, so just to give you an idea of what your bill will look like in different scenarios, uh, first, the default as is now, the utility bill, let's say you pay $100 a month for electricity. If you uh, just join the CCA or don't opt out, as it were, um, you will find your bill is reduced a small amount. It's not going to be life-changing, but let's say it's $96.50. That will fluctuate. Um, you know, market prices are up and down, but overall, CCAs save a lot of money over, over the years. Um, then let's say you don't, you're not a part of the CCA, you're just in the community solar program, which, by the way, is the option right now. Anybody can enroll in this community solar program right now, even though the CCA hasn't rolled out yet. It's totally fine to do that. And that is approximately 10%. They say up to 10%. You can't say it exactly because a lot of variables. But the goal is to save you 10%. So let's say your bill then would be $91. Um, in the case where you have both, say you join Community Solar now and you stay with the CCA program when it rolls out in the spring, your bill could be something like $87.50. So it's additive, it's additional savings, and you are supporting two kinds of renewable energy in New York State. Community solar is actually really local. It's within central Hudson territory. Next slide. So how does community solar work? The first step is that you subscribe. Um, in this case, we are working with Nexamp. We're working with different developers across the state. You know, we go through a process of vetting their contracts and determining, making sure they meet certain criteria. Um, Nexamp, uh, Nexamp has done that, uh, so that we are filling their projects right now in Central Hudson. Um, they would work with you to figure out what is your typical annual electricity consumption, and they would match that. So they would give you an allocation of solar panels in the farm, the solar farm, uh, that roughly should be approximately how much electricity you typically consume. If it's not, you can go back to them at the end of the year and say, this isn't working. Maybe you've bought a ton of new you know, appliances. Um, things may change. You can always adjust the allocation. The goal is to meet the amount that you are using. Um, and I will say a little caveat, if you already have solar panels, Unfortunately, you cannot participate. Hats off to you for being an early adopter and supporter of renewable energy, and you guys get the best deal of all. Um, but Community Solar is uh, another program that it, uh, you, you basically can't double dip. You can't enjoy the uh, solar credits twice. So if you already have panels, you cannot do this. This is a, an equity opportunity to enjoy those benefits for those of us who don't have panels. Yeah. So the next thing that happens is the solar farm feeds that electricity into the grid generating a CDG generation credit for you. That's what it's called. You'll see a line item on your central Hudson bill there uh, for this CDG generation credit. The credit is applied to your total bill. So it is for supply and transmission, and it will bring your bill down to almost nothing. It'll bring it really far down. Um, so your bill will look great. <laughs> and then, next slide, subsequent to that, you will get a bill from Nexamp, a separate bill, for 90% of the amount of the credits that were on your central Hudson bill. And therein is the 10% discount. So it's not, you're getting charged 90% of the credit you previously got. I know it's kind of annoyingly complicated, and we are lobbying for consolidated billing, which means to say everything would be on one bill. And we're hoping that they're going to roll that out in 2020. It looks like it's on track, but this is the current reality. Um, so you should see between the two approximately 10%. It's going to change um, over the year. The solar panels will generate more in the summer, less in the other years. That'll be distributed uh, across the months so that really it should be at the end of a whole year you can see the 10% savings. Uh, again, otherwise you can go back and, and readjust your allocation. Um, and you can cancel at any time. There's no penalty. So I really don't see any risk in this. I mean, the worst case scenario is that you save slightly less money than you thought you were going to save. Um, and you're supporting renewable energy, so <laughs> it's a good thing. Next slide. 
Um, and then in addition to that, um, we have a program, you guys may have seen, there's a lot of marketing and advertising out there for these community solar programs. They're spending a fortune on flyers in the mail, you know, little gimmicks, things to, you know, certificate cards and whatnot. Um, we are actually saving them some money by enrolling through these programs because it is a vetted, trusted, municipally endorsed community energy program. Uh, and so we are able to channel some of those funds back into the community. That's kind of something we do a lot, the same way we partner with local nonprofits in every region. We're always looking for ways to channel the funds back into the municipalities and the communities. Um, we build a sustainability fund for the municipality through this process. So every person who enrolls generates $50 that goes towards the fund. Um, in the case of Beacon, Phillipstown, Cold Spring, and Marbletown, who uh, are already underway with this process, they've already raised um, 10,000 in Beacon, 10,000 in Phillipstown, and, and close to 6,000 in Marbletown, and they're just, uh, they're still building momentum, and, and gonna, they're gonna see those numbers grow. And our um, pilot program up in the Finger Lakes, which is much further along, it's 15% of the population has enrolled, which is really, impressive, that's unusual. Um, and they have raised $25,000 for a stormwater control project uh, for their watershed protection. Um, and Beacon is raising money for a sustainability fund for the schools for a curriculum. And Phillipstown's doing a refrigerant management program for their climate smart communities, uh, community. And Marbletown's doing a, white, a walk bike path. So it's really up to the municipality that's at their discretion what they want the funds to go towards, but it's another way to engage the community in conversation, uh, and, and it's another value add as to why people should enroll through this program. And, you know, that's important. So NextAmp is out there advertising. We love them. We're partners with them, but you only generate funds for the community if you enroll through Hudson Valley Community Power. Yeah. So why are we doing this? Um, I come to this as an environmental activist, first and foremost, and I saw the impact of what Jewel was doing on the market, and I tried to work there and got a job eventually. <laughs> um, we're doing this because it is the only way that we are going to achieve, uh, New York is going to achieve its clean energy goals. They have a mandate to reach 70% renewable by 2030, and uh, the state energy agenda, the re reforming the energy vision plan heavily depends on two programs, community choice aggregation and community solar. They are core to achieving the clean energy goals. So uh, to me, that's the number one reason. Uh, so, so that's really it. Um, I will also just add that anyone in Central Hudson can enroll in this program. And if you have friends outside of Clinton, um, you can tell them to support Clinton, they can just select Clinton in the drop-down menu when they enroll and the funds will go to this community. Um, and anybody can do that now. The, the CCA program is gonna be rolling out in the spring uh, and I think a lot more people will be joining at that point, but you know, if you're excited now, there's no reason to wait. Um, and our website is a great source of information. We have tons of frequently asked questions. Uh, that's HudsonValleyCommunityPower.com. There's a phone number here and on the website, and we're always happy to get into all the questions with you and really go through it, help with the enroll enrollment process. Um, it really is about, a, a part of this is about educating the community on energy and how it works. And so it's fun to have those conversations. Um, so that's it. I'll turn it over to any questions. Uh, where is the solar farm for this project? It's not in Clinton. Right, yeah. There is a project in Accord uh, in the town of Rochester, although that one just filled, so there is another one, which might be in the one in Wappingers. I'll have to get back to you with the exact location of the new one that we're filling now. It's not in Clinton. It's not in Clinton. It, it, yeah, technically, um, community solar just has to be within Central Hudson, it has to be within your utility district. If you sign up for this uh, project, do you have to do a yearly renewal? No, it's up to 25 years. You can leave any time. 
uh, it just keeps going. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I mean in the Hudson Valley we just uh, finished enrolling 500 people and this pro program really rolled out at the end of summer. So it's still early. But that's, it's a good number. I mean, unfortunately, community solar developers are really struggling to meet their enrollment requirements. And a lot of them are dying on the vine as a result. It's actually really a tragedy. Um, so anything we can do to bring those up will help renewable energy for New York State. And, and it's really facilitated by these municipally endorsed programs. It makes a huge difference because there's so much noise out there and people need to know that they can trust the contract and the terms. As an individual, yeah. Correct, right. It's just that it's endorsed and encouraged by the municipality and, and vetted. You know, yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you explain that in the sign up process, it's not an immediate thing? I, I signed up for it um, and was part of the Rochester one. And it, it's interesting because the emails that you get after that are saying, it's not fully built yet. You're not, so it doesn't happen immediately once you sign up. And I think that's something people should know. Right, yes, that is a good point. Um, and next Amp will give you the exact details, but they are moving fast. I mean, it, it, the other, part, other developers, I've seen projects take much longer. These ones are really, they're cranking and through. I mean, it's a matter of months, I believe, until you'll be getting bill credits. Next question is, the sustainable fund, is that paid once or is that a yearly thing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Right now it's paid once, but you know, if it looks like we want to keep going and keep enrolling more and more people, we can revisit that. Yeah. I mean, it seems logical. For example, say the first year you get 200 people. Next year you add another 150 or 200 people. Right. Well, will I get 150 worth the second year and 200 the first year? Or how, that's the question. Right, right, right. No, uh, yeah, it would be at the end of next year we can do an assessment. I mean, I think at a certain point you do reach saturation within a community um, for how many people are going to enroll. So, but yeah. Uh, the other question, is the PowerPoint going to be available so we can put it on our web page? Yeah, sure, I'd be delighted to send that, yes, to you. <laughs> Anybody else have some question? I don't, I don't necessarily need this, uh, but could you go over the, uh, on the community power, um, the opting in process and the opting out? Uh, is it a commitment? You said up to 25 years, but what is the commitment? And let's say someone sells their house, are they now penalized for getting out early? Yeah, I mean, this is part of um, the vetting that we do for contracts is that there's no penalization for anything ever. <laughs> you can leave at any time without any cancellation fee. And you could come back, sure. Um, it may not be the same exact terms if you come back later. Um, but it is, uh, you have to opt in, so that, you know, the CCA is the opt-out program where if you don't do anything, you're in, unless you want to opt out. Whereas with Community Solar, if you don't do something, it's not gonna happen. You have to sign the contract. Yeah. Okay, I thank you for giving us the guidance and the information and hope it was a successful trip for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. This is the end of the work, uh, workshop on uh, community power. Community, so, yeah, community power. Too many community words. <laughs>
Okay. I'd like to call the regular town board meeting of December 10th, 2019 to order. Please rise and we'll pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <clears throat> Uh, we only have a few minutes to approve this time. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the November 12, 2019 continued public hearing events law. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the November 12, 2019 regular town board meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the December 2nd, 2019 highway bid opening. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, now we go into public discussion for items on the agenda. Is there anyone here that's gonna be talking on agenda items? Or anything? On the agenda items? Okay. Come on, hop up. Well, you gotta open it. Oh, we gotta make a motion, yeah. I make a coming. motion to open the meeting to public discussion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. carried. Aye. Uh, you know the rules, name. Uh, Hughes 160, Schultz Hill Road. Yeah. Uh, just with these laws and stuff, we gotta move forward. This guy, he's continuously he's throwing up more sheds. He's got stuff going on. You all sit up there like a bunch of bobbleheads, nod, but nothing's getting done. You gotta proceed with this and get something moving. This has been going on for over a year now. I've come to these meetings, I come to these meetings and nothing's getting accomplished and nothing's stopping this guy's intent. He's live from the start and he's continuing and continuing. Okay, uh, Brendan? Yeah, uh, she asked to be able to do a short legislative uh, discussion here, just a short one, because she can't be here tonight. Later on, she's got a conflict. So I said she could do a little bit here. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, so quickly, as Ray always asks, um, we approved the 2020 Dutchess County budget last week. Um, I noticed today that there is not an approved budget link yet on the county website, um, but there is the proposed. Um, but one thing you won't see in the proposed um, is a budget amendment that I'm really pleased with. Um, I've talked before about pushing to establish a regularly staffed hazardous waste drop-off site in Dutchess County. Um, currently, as you know, we only have three days a year, and those days ask for pre-registration and are usually booked. Um, to capacity, um, which means we're not obviously fully meeting the recycling needs of the county and leads me to the concern that then hazardous waste is not being properly disposed of. Um, and we're t when we're talking about hazardous waste, we're talking about um, light bulbs, paint thinner, um, electronics, all of that good stuff. So um, the budget amendment that was approved includes funding for a study that will be conducted by the Dutchess County Environmental Management Committee that will help us develop a plan this next year to hopefully actually make that site a reality in the following budget cycle. Um, and the other thing of interest, um, is that we approved a county funded program that will allow individual school districts to opt into a county funded program for something that's called school bus photo violation monitoring systems. Um, so those are cameras on school buses that um, will hopefully record drivers who violate school bus traffic laws. Um, again, it's voluntary, so school districts can decide. Um, and then hopefully that'll lead to the enforcement of monetary fines um, starting at $250 for the first offense. Um, and there are details on the county website or on my Facebook page. There's a link if you'd like to read the whole resolution. Um, and then the final thing I just wanted to make everyone um, in Clinton aware of is that the uh, Dutchess County Veterans um, 
Vet to Vet Yearly Christmas Party will be held at the Brown Derby in Poughkeepsie on December 17th from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, it's free food. Um, you can bring a guest. And please RSVP to Andrew Dye at 845-473-2500. Two five zero zero extension one three zero six. That's Andrew Die, eight four five four seven three two five zero zero extension thirteen zero six. Thank you all. Do you have any questions or no. nada? No. Thank all you. right, <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks for helping me get here tonight. Yep. Okay. Any anybody else? Yeah. Yep. Come on, hop up, Carol. <laughs> Uh, Carol Hughes, 220 Schultz Hill Road. I haven't had a chance to look through the uh, regenerated uh, party venue. I try to get closer to the mic there, or just turn it around a little bit or yeah. something. That's I good. haven't had a chance to really look through the regenerated uh, party events law. Uh, just glancing at the first page, uh, it must generate revenues of at least $50,000 from agricultural operations um, just speaking for the place next to me the heart residence does anybody check their tax schedules to see what their actual income is on party venues or on agricultural because they're certainly not generating fifty thousand dollars guaranteed on having 25, 30 goats and uh, a few chickens. So does anybody look at that? Um, so I can't speak exactly to any particular um, farms or anything else like that, but in order to, to get a, a exemption as being a farm, you only have to have 10,000 in revenue and you would have to provide the tax collector proof through Schedule F of, of your earnings. No, it's um, the assessor. Th that's what I meant. Sorry, <laughs> the assessor. <clears throat> is that um, done? Is, is it done? Well, Yearly. if you're, if you're okay. getting if a tax don't. exemption, then yes, they're supposed to do it. Every year, but not 50, 10. So because this law is not in effect, that 50 would not be checked at this point. When does this come into effect? What Whenever we can pass it. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's been a good 10 months or more. Well, this is the revised version. Avenue. We've come up with every avenue that can be existing mm -hmm. not to pass it. And by the looks of the paper today, with having that uh, big event or hotel in the town of Clinton, apparently that wasn't monitored. Uh, and the other thing that's sort of starting to bug me now is the Adrian's Farm. How did they get a bar? And don't call me just a, you know, uh, a brewery. It's a bar. I don't care. Anytime you serve alcohol, it's a bar. And how did that get through? You know? I mean, we just keep yesing and we're not doing anything. You're just appeasing us by letting us get up here and complain. And then we leave and that's the end of it till the next time. So, I'm very disappointed with our town. I'm very disappointed with the town board by not doing anything. And I know that don't mean a hill of beans to anybody, but so, we're not forgetting it. So we don't need to necessarily pass a law. It's, it's a matter of the zoning enforcement officer to enforce the current zoning laws, which a lot of these things would be against our current zoning law because they're not approved. Um, well, so, we so we don't need this law to, to enforce what we already have. What we need is a zoning enforcement officer. We don't have one. Yeah, and, and what does that take to get one? We are, find someone. I'm, I'm personally working with the county, and we're trying everything we can in terms of the all civil service uh, lists, anybody that's taken that. I'm reaching out to other counties that have zoning officers to see if some of them would be willing to come in on a part-time basis and work for us as well. We're going to put, we have ads going in the paper. We're doing everything we can. We cannot find someone who qualifies for that position. We've also 
this board has also uh, voted to have a, a, a secondary position in that, in the zoning enforcement. But we ha we're working on doing that. Okay. I, I'm just hoping it's not going to be another year, and I'm go we're going to have a summer of parties up there again. I mean, you know, we can call the police all we want. If we don't have a law saying they shouldn't have it, mm -hmm. or a zoning enforcer saying we shouldn't have it, we're talking not. It's, uh, you know, and I, I got a feeling this ain't going to go through until next summer. And then we have a few more parties, because... Uh, I see a big excavation machine up there. What's that for? Huh? Another building. Another building, yeah. Does anybody check on that? And I guarantee you, if I got a building in my yard to put a few chickens in, these guys would be down there making sure that it's not fixed to the ground, making sure the measurements. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter if they're a farm or not. If they're putting up a building, the building inspector had to have issued a building permit. Or should have. Or should have. Or and should. if they haven't, he then he's... He says that he doesn't need to. Because he's ag. He we don't need it. That's not true. We're agricultural. That's not true. Yeah, we get a bone inspector that doesn't know his job. Because that's exactly what he's told me. Huh? I, I don't know the particulars, so I can't talk to the particulars. Well, so. somebody better take a ride down there and take a look at that property. Because what they do to my nephew, I'm to the west. They get away with what they're doing to him, they're going to do it to me. And this old lady ain't going to put up with it, because I'm not going to be a happy camper. <laughs> Thank you. Mike Farrell, Schultz Hill Road. I haven't had a chance to look through this the first day I'm looking at it, but just one of the things that really gets me is on page 3F. Uh, from what I can gather, you change this from 75 acres to 10 acres, and it says here you can have 500 people at an event. I'm sorry, 500 people on 10 acres? I, I can't even imagine having that many folks on that small of a parcel of land. You're kidding me, right? Between him and I, we have 10 acres. I can't imagine having 500 people on that. Who, where do these numbers come from? Who thought to 500? Do you live next to 10 acres and want 500 people? Well, my recommendation, and we haven't gotten to talking about this, but my recommendation would bring it back to 200 like it was. The attorney I'm changed just, yeah, I'm just going over yeah, The attorney had. changed it from um, his conversations with uh, Dutchess County uh, planning. So th this is a document that was created by the town attorney working with uh, Dutchess County planning. <coughs> so it's not set in stone. No, this is the I'm recommendation and I'm hoping tonight that we accept this and we move to a public hearing, let's say for next month, and then we can get into the details as okay. to what we could take out, what we should add in. Okay, because I'm just looking at them. Absolutely. Well, I don't know where these Abs numbers come abs from. Absolutely. Wow. So these, these are basically comments from the county right. planning department, what they think is right. Any, anyone, anybody else? Okay, then I make a motion to return to regular order of business. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Supervisor's comments. I got them here someplace. Here we are. Okay, uh, this is essentially the last town board meeting of the year, the regular meetings. We'll have a special one later in a month to close up financial records. So at this time, I'd like to thank Elliot Werner for his years of service on the town board and other boards, and to thank Theron Tompkins for his years of service as highway superintendent and as a member of the highway crew before superintendent. The reorganization town board meeting will be held on Friday, January. <laughs> the reorganization town board meeting will be held on Friday, January 3rd, starting at 6 p.m. with a swearing in of the elected officials. It will be followed at 6.30 with a reorganization meeting where many administrative actions are approved. Following the meeting will be a social time with some light refreshments being served. The town offices, highway department, justice court office court will be closed for Christmas holiday on Wednesday, December 25th, and New Year's Day, Wednesday, January 1st, 2020. The community library will be closed on the same days 
The recycling center will be open as usual from 7.30 to noon on Saturdays, December 28th and January 4th. Get rid of all of your packages. Thanks are given to the Clinton Friendship Garden Center for their placing Christmas swags on the doors of the buildings of the town complex. They've been doing this for many years. The Clinton Christmas, Christmas tree lighting ceremony will be held on Saturday, December 21st at 4 p.m. in front of the library. East Clinton Fire Department Santa will also be there, so bring your children and cameras. Santa will give some small gifts to the children. A few carols may be sung and light refreshments will be served. This is a joint activity of the Town Recreation Committee, Clinton Community Library, and the East Clinton Fire Department. Town law has a local law requiring no parking on public roads from November 15th to April 15th to allow the highway crew to safely snow plow and do ice control. You may be fined or have your vehicle towed, so please comply. The last item is <clears throat> the Warren Lodge Masons, with the help of the Friends of the Kitchen, are spearheading the remodeling of the town kitchen. They held a successful fundraiser dinner on November 16th in the Clinton Alliance Church's Youth Center. The cost estimate for the initial work is $2,600, with the Masons pay, also paying for the four burner range. A design team will be working on the details for the remodeling. It is hoped to be done by April 2020. So that's the end of that. Now we'll go into reports. Planning board. Thank you. Was very nice of you, Ray. I appreciate it, uh, that your comments. The uh, planning board had only one meeting this month. The uh, second meeting was, uh, was canceled. Uh, that was uh, on December 2nd. But the uh, November 19th meeting uh, was actually was quite a long one. There were a number of applications on the agenda, uh, an area variance on Lake Drive uh, to convert an existing structure into habitable space uh, for house, to housing guests and family members, um, received a positive recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, property on uh, Center Road, number 1567 Center Road, uh, applicant wishes to build a, uh, an accessory structure, uh, basically a garage in the side yard, uh, requiring side yard setbacks, and also uh, placement of the, of the structure, of the accessory structure in front of the principal building, which was also approved, uh, given a positive recommendation to the ZBA. Um, an applicant, a Maple Lane, wanting to combine two properties, um, the issue that both uh, the main issue there is that both the properties were uh, are non-conforming, um, but the uh, the applicant had applied for and received a variance, and the lot line adjustment was granted by the planning board. Uh, a continuing application on Schoolhouse Road for uh, a gentleman who wants to put in uh, put in a shed within uh, 100 feet of the uh, Little Wappingers Creek. We needed a wetland, had gotten variances for setbacks, required a wetland permit, which was granted by the planning board. Um, a wetland permit also on, uh, also on Schoolhouse Road, for the further up Schoolhouse Road. Uh, no action was taken there. Escrow account was established for engineering review. A, an application for a two lot subdivision on Willow Lane um, again, uh, no action taken. Escrow account was established. Uh, the main issue here having to do with um, uh, a landlocked or potentially a landlocked parcel needing uh, access to the road. Uh, so no action was taken pending further discussion and further review. And lastly, um, cornerstone of Rhinebeck over on um, Serenity Hill Road, wishing to expand number of beds uh, from 100, what is currently to 138, uh, and requiring a, um, a special permit. This is a pre-existing non-conforming use, uh, but the issue is whether the, they need a permit to because it's an expansion of the use. Um, so there was considerable discussion. Uh, escrow account was established for a legal opinion, and uh, no further action was taken. 
and that's the report. Thank you. Next one, Zoning Board of Appeals. Zoning Board of Appeals, the meeting, uh, which would have been the Thursday of Thanksgiving holiday, obviously was uh, canceled as it always is, <laughs> and rescheduled for the 5th of December, which will be reported uh, at the next town board meeting. Thank you. Conservation Advisory Committee. CAC met on November 13th. Uh, they had two items to review. One was a secret review for the Devereux DeWitt's bed and breakfast at 18 Hollow Road. And the shed uh, that Elliot was speaking about uh, close to a waterway. They sent letters of recommendation for both of these reviews uh, to the planning board. The Town of Clinton Authorization CCA package was submitted to the Department of Public Service by Jeff Demansky of Hudson Valley Energy. When approved, a letter from the town will be mailed to Clinton residents notifying them of how they may opt out of the CCA. Two more public CCA meetings will be scheduled. End of report. Hmm, thank you. Recreation Committee. Yes, the Recreation Committee um, <coughs> met and they uh, made a summary of the year's activities. Um, this all will be on the website. Um, but uh, the park, for information again, um, is closed. Uh, we did leave it open until the middle of November based on good weather, but normally the park hours are April to October. Uh, we also re generated uh, $4,700 in revenue from the pavilion, which uh, uh, some of that money is gonna be put back into the parks. That's something that we haven't done in, in past years. We ran a four-week uh, youth camp, which was very successful. We had a very high rate of enrollment. Uh, the roofs on the, uh, uh, the dugout for Fran Mark Park was uh, replaced. We still have no, to work Friends on Park. Friends Park. We bought one new piece of equipment for Fran Mark Park uh, for the playground. Uh, we increased the lighting in both parks. Um, we did have some incidents this past summer with the parks, um, so the lighting will be increased. We're also looking to uh, install cameras in the parks, okay? Uh, we purchased some new grills and benches, planted a flower garden along the guardrails in Franmark Park, new lifeguard chair. We've got a wish list which will be put on the, uh, um, on the web for both Franmark Park and Friends Park. That list will be turned into some activity for 2020. We just haven't determined, based on the budget, what, what we're able to do and what we absolutely have to do. End of report. Thank you. Building inspector. The building inspector um, logged 217 miles uh, this period. The uh, total cost of the proposed construction is $5,697,414. There were 17 building permits issued, uh, COs and CCs were 15, and title searches were seven. And for that $5 million plus dollars, I highlighted three particular things uh, for new residents. Uh, one is uh, on 617 Slate Quarry Road for 150000 uh, 221 Hollow Road for a new um, residence for 1,100,000. And um, 418 Mountain View Road for $400,000. End of report. Thank you. Zoning Administrator. Uh, zoning Administrator report for the month of November for 17 building permits, building permit applications were reviewed. Uh, there are two issues involving the, um, two zoning issues involving the town attorney, one on Deer Ridge Drive and one on Mountain View, both of which are continuing. Um, two zoning denials issued, um, both of which were taken up at the uh, November 19th meeting of the planning board, uh, the one on Lake Drive having to do with the accessory dwelling and the proposed two lot subdivision on Willow Lane. Uh, two new complaints were received, both on Deer Ridge Drive, dealing with smoke, one on the 13th, one on the 16th. Um, pending complaints, uh, orders to comply have been issued on Mountain View Road, dealing with the kennel, accessory structures without proper setback, and a property on Allen Road having to do with uh, regarding multiple unregistered vehicles. 
And finally, uh, in terms of unresolved complaints, there are half a dozen that are in the pipeline being, being worked on by the zoning administrator. Um, Deer Ridge Drive, open construction permits, extra sheds, et cetera. Uh, Hollow Road, multiple unregistered vehicles. Um, two, uh, actually two properties, two, uh, two different locations on Hollow Road. A uh, front yard setback violation on Schultz Hill Road. Uh, a, a, a sawmill operation uh, also on Hollow Road. And a building maintenance issue on um, Cedar Lane. Letters have been sent, and the zoning administrator is waiting for responses. End of report. Thank you. Highway. The highway department um, during December actually sand and plowed during um, the, uh, the snowstorms, which really were December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. All three days they were out. And they were also sa doing sanding on the 3rd as well again. Uh, they've removed some more dead trees. Of course, that comes with a lot of the, the snowstorms and weathers. They maintain the trucks. I, I never, until I got involved, I never realized how much maintenance is involved after snowstorms and stuff in the winter. So that takes a good part of their time. They've cleaned ditches on German Road and um, Schultzville. And they've done dirt patching, which is an ongoing thing in this town. As you know, we have many dirt roads. End of report. Thank you. Scenic and historic roads? Uh, no activity this month. Okay. Library report. Uh, the library trustees met for their annual meeting and holiday party last night. Uh, they took a series of votes to approve financials, the 2020 budget, officers for 2020, and the purchase of shelving units. It is worth noting that um, the attendance at the library's children's programs has more than doubled since last year, and attendance at adult programs has gone up over 33%. Um, they've been doing very, they've been doing incredible work with the community and the community's responding in big numbers. Um, the library is closing early on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve at 1 p.m. Check the website for any changes to programming on those days. And Zach Snow is leaving the Board of Trustees at the end of December. He's been on the board for over four years, seeing the library through their reorganization in the 414 referendum. His contributions to the library and the board have been invaluable, and I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to Zach and wish him well in his future endeavors. Thank you. Altis, formerly Cablevision. No communication this month, no report. No, no increase in prices. <laughs> zoning revision. So um, zoning revision, we met uh, last Thursday. Um, and just so people know that um, we're, we're going in chronological order. So um, the order in which we were supposed to uh, hit next was 25066, but we've been taking uh, action on other sections even though we didn't touch them as a, a zoning revision committee. So uh, the topic came up as uh, 25064, which is outdoor storage. There had been some conversations in, uh, in previous board meetings, and so we spent the whole night uh, basically talking about 25064. And, um, and so that was the only topic that we handled. Um, so in January, since the next two board meetings uh, uh, would have been either December 19th, but with all the other things that we're doing out to close out the year, and then uh, the next one would be uh, um, January 1st, so that's not gonna happen. So the next meeting would be January 16th, um, at which time I would suspect that we're gonna go 25066, but uh, if there's something in between, uh, we do look at things as they come up and, and we're open to changing uh, things in the law that either need to be updated or fixed. So um, end of committee. Thank you. <clears throat> Transmission lines, not very exciting this time. Transco submitted their plans on October 18th, 2019 and filed their Article 7 application with New York State PSC, Public Service Commission. Nothing has changed since last month's report. The town in cooperation with the Hudson Valley Smart Energy Coalition will work to ensure the transmission upgrade does not seriously impact our town. There will be no, no power line workshop directly following the town board meeting tonight. Uh, cemeteries want to say something? 
Well, unfortunately, I do have a report. We had, <laughs> we had two burials this past month. Um, we had a, uh, a full body burial, both at Pleasant Plains Cemetery. I don't think there's anything particularly unique about that, but um, 23rd, we had a full body burial and we had a um, cremation burial on the 26th. Um, but at the moment, that's it for okay. now. <laughs> for now. Mind. <laughs> well, let's hope so. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> Uh, Wick, want to say something? Uh, there was a WIC meeting this month. Their meetings are at 9 a.m., and uh, I ended up having a conflict and did not attend the meeting. I know that uh, Councilman-elect uh, Giuliano did go, so maybe at the public discussion later in the meeting, if he has anything to say about what happened there, he can let us know. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any reports that we missed? We tried to cover them all. Okay, we're well, going to... Th one thing I would iterate that I didn't mention um, and is not in my rec report is that we are planning to do another uh, bonfire in January. The date has not been set yet and I'll, that will be set and will be put on the website. That's done in Franmart Park uh, and we have refreshments and uh, it's been fairly well attended the past two years. Um, prior to that it was done by the, uh, the business community. So. I'd ask you to look at that uh, website, and uh, if, it'll be weather dependent, of course, but uh, we usually do it about the first two weeks in January, so that's around that time frame. Yeah. Okay? It's essentially a way for a lot of people to get rid of their Christmas trees. Yeah. So, it, you know, we don't want it too late. It takes too long for them to get rid of them. Right. Yeah. Okay, we'll go into old business, and this is uh, the vet events law. Dean, give us an update of what we're doing. So, as, as uh, reported last month, um, uh, the town attorney has been uh, working with uh, Dutchess County Planning, um, which we could have passed the, uh, the, 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 law, the law the way it was uh, last month. It's now changed um, by advice of Dutchess County Planning. We've separated the uh, the inclusion of the Dude Ranch Conference Center, so that will be a separate section as it is currently in the, zone, the zoning law. So it's been stripped out this out of this event law, um, and this will only deal with agricultural events. Um, again, this is a document that uh, supposedly will pass Dutchess County Planning's uh, desires. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we have to agree with it. Um, in fact, as uh, earlier speaker tonight, uh, Mr. Perella mentioned uh, in that uh, page three F section where it says that we we're gonna go to 500. You know, we had a committee meeting and we had all stakeholders involved, including the farms that are, you know, two of the farms that are having these events. And we were all in agreement for 200. And I would like to make the, the change and keep it back at 200 not accepting uh, the county's uh, motion to make it 500. Uh, but that being said, I would like to move forward on this document, um, give us time to go through it, have public hearing next month, and therefore hopefully have a, an event law approved that uh, everybody could be somewhat happy with. I would say on the 500 thing, I also think that number's too high. Uh, but. We're all ignoring the fact that the first sentence in that paragraph says the planning board shall determine the maximum number of attendees allowed at any agricultural event right. venue. So that's just in no case shall it exceed 500, but they have the discretion to right. make it much lower Smaller. than that. Yeah. Does it make sense to hold off and do this and the conference? Because there's, there's still a law coming on the conferences, which we don't have yet, as I understand from Shane, right? So well, does it make we, sense to do them simultaneously rather than... No, no Shane separately? said go ahead with this, oh, but... Um, yeah, the, I mean, I mean, we have a law and conference center already, so right. the, the right. law is already there. Right. Um, we had, uh, in the zoning revision, only changed that moderately. Um, so he's not working on a new one for the conference. Well, he is. He said oh, he he's is. working on uh, yeah. some changes to that as well. But okay. uh, right. I think that's to kind of pair it up to this. But um, I don't think that's going to change anything that we have here. Um, like I said, my only recommendation would be hold a public hearing next month for this. Um, I would immediately make a recommendation that we change the 500 to 200 because I don't think anybody wants a 500 
whether the planning board would approve it or not, uh, 500 people at an event here. Um, even though we do have a mass gathering law, um, I would like us to move forward on having the public hearing and, and go forward. Okay. If, if <clears throat> just from a procedural standpoint, say we get five comments that mm -hmm. we want to change here. Sure. Before the public hearing, people send them to you. Sure. And then you just identify those and we discuss them after the public hearing. And well, then the law could be put on the table in the final form to be approved. Right. If there's some substantial changes, then obviously um, we may have to re advertise and meet, re have another public hearing. But um, <coughs> other than that, if they're just minor changes uh like the we could potentially 500 to 200 yeah. or whatever we could definitely ch you know approve yeah. something next month after the public hearing uh with some m minor changes yeah without having to do yeah i just wanted else. people to understand the process but if you want to send it to me i mean i would cc everybody on the board yeah. but if you send it to me i'll make sure everybody on the board has a copy um so that if there are things that someone didn't think about i mean we can definitely take what you have to say and, and maybe put another spin on it in our, our own ways. Um, but again, if we don't move forward, there's a lot of people that are upset. Um, I wanted to move forward last month, which would have been a more stringent document. This is less stringent, but let's, let's move forward. And if we need to change it in the future, we can always go back and change it. Right. Yep. So if everybody's in agreement, I'd yep. like to make a motion that we have a public <coughs> hearing on whatever date that would be. January 16th. Oh. Yeah, January 14th. 14th. Um, I guess we should probably make it early. So make it six o'clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Second. Any other discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. Next one is short term rentals, fondly called STR. Well, as we know from as we know from uh, the previous zoning revision meeting, uh, the changes that we all made on this, I sent out to Shane, and uh, we've gone back and forth and got it whittled down and all the changes are in. I had some questions to the insurance broker and to uh, Lewis. Haven't gotten answers on those yet, but it won't be any substantial changes. So I think in January, I'll just put it on the table and we'll set a public hearing for February and we should be ready with this. Um, so in the next week or so, I'll send you the final version whenever I get, I gotta send it to Shane, get it cleaned up and mm -hmm. the final version will be sent to everybody. And put on the web page. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at. I mean, short-term rentals are two pieces, one with occupants and Yeah, one. there's one, there's a type one that is mm -hmm. owner-occupied, hosted, as right. they call it, or and type two is non-hosted. Right. Okay. Highway bids. Okay, um, and if those of you may know, each year we, at this point in time, we go out for bids for all of the uh, materials that the uh, highway department will need for the coming year. <clears throat> those bids were uh, received, and uh, this is a, uh, a, a um, this is to pass the, the approval of the bids. So I'd make a motion that we approve the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approve awarding the 2020 highway bids to those vendors highlighted in attachment A, which is on the website, for highway bid results. Anybody? Is there a sec sec second? Second. Second? Okay, discussion. I got a question. Have we looked to see if any of this material could be purchased cheaper through the county bid? like we do sand, not sand, ice, um, salt. That we do on a county bid. I'm just saying I don't know. Do you know? 
Why don't you come up and speak then? <clears throat> which which materials were you guys talking about, or would like to know about? Uh, any, of any of them? Any, any of them? You know, um, like stone, for example. That comes from uh, Peckham, which the county gets it from anyways. I know, but if the county gets it for, we'll say, $10 and we get it for 15 here, we should go for the county, say 5 That I don't know. I was following off the previous years. I understand, but I'm just yep. looking at trying to save money, and, and I'm not saying that these are wrong. Well, that was, those were, all those bids were put out to all the local contractors, right. and I it was know. a sealed bid, so nobody knew what she either... Yep. I vendor understand. was bidding on so all of them basically sharpened their pencils are trying to get the our business so and the county may not use certain ones of these too i don't yeah. know I do some of that know, stuff they don't i do know in the past that theron did take that into consideration yep. the the sand bid that is one off the uh county bid the the snow and ice sand bid that did come off of uh, the county uses that same vendor that we uh, want to award that to. Um, the quarter inch stone, the uh, company that got the oil and stoning bid for this year was Gorman. Um, Gorman actually recommended, I believe, was it Cal Russo or Callahan? Cal Russo. Got, Cal Russo got that. Yeah. That was their recommendation to use their uh, materials, which is approved through them mm -hmm. for oil and stoning. The backup to that was uh, Peckham, uh, was their second choice for the oil and stoning. Yeah, I was just, you know. The salt comes off the state and county yeah. Uh, bid. Yeah, I know the salt does, yeah. And the, the only. <clears throat> uh, there wasn't much of an increase from last year's bid prices, if you yeah. look. Compared, because yeah. I went back to 2017, 18, and 19, and it it didn't go up that much at all. And some of them even went down. Yeah, and and the other one is Culvert Pipe. It's always Shamong. I mean, he's the only supplier in the area that does it. They bought so out ESP, so it's it's it the, single is source it the same basically price now. Same prices the yep. county pays, or do we yep. we get? Same thing with the uh, snowplow blades and the carbide yep. blades. That's single source. That's off state bid. Um, which it's the only person around here that has those that we use. Okay. I, I just looking, I'm yep. not saying these are wrong. Okay. We have okay. A vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Todd. Thanks, Todd. <clears throat> okay, we're in the new business. <clears throat> For the reorg and the annual meeting dates, these are dates of, of meetings that we're going to be having coming this fall, uh, coming this end of the m month here. I make a motion to approve the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approves setting the date for the reorganization meeting for January 3rd, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. in the Clinton Town Hall. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. <clears throat> the next one is I make a motion to approve the following resolution be it resolved that the town board approves setting the date for the annual meeting for December 30th 2019 at 7 p.m. in the town hall Clinton town hall rather is there a second second um, any discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. motion carried The next one is uh, updating our town engineer costs. I make a motion to approve the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board, town board appoints CPL engineers as town engineer for the planning board at the rates provided on the attached 2020 basis of fees for Clinton planning board. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Question. Hold on, there's a discussion. Oh, oh, question. discussion, okay. <laughs> uh, a year ago, we went to uh, an RFP, and in that RFP, there was a sentence that said, it is intended that this agreement will be for the duration of three years. And now it's one year later, and we're getting a 5% increase. Now, I understand they haven't increased us in years. Yeah. 
and I understand that they got bought out by CPL, so I think we can expect increases every year from now well, on. Well, I don't know it'll be every year, but. but you know, we, they were the cheapest. They were. Uh, really, they were. They were really the cheapest bad. last year. But now the new prices put them right in line with Nelson Poten Voorhees, who submitted a, one last year. So uh, I, I don't think it would be. I mean, obviously it's December. We don't. We're going to appoint this person this, this, this next month. Um, I just I, I feel like it's 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 a violation of what they agreed to a year ago when we said it was going to be a three-year agreement. Well, we can just hold it and I'll ask them what they can do. Okay, I'd like to do that. Okay, so this will be cold. and we'll do it at. Uh, January meeting. Ray, will you follow up? Yeah. The same thing for the next yeah, the same thing. I'm not going to even say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one is a tax tertiary for Travis. I make a motion to approve the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approves resolution number of 2019, hereby authorizing the attorneys for the town of Clinton, Capolino, Rothschild, and Egan LLP to enter into a stipulation with the attorney for the petitioner, Graffin, Coogan, Sol Solster, and Horgan, PC, Matthew S. Clifford, Esquire, the terms of which are set forth in the attached stipulation, and hereby authorizes the attorneys for the town of Clinton to sign said stipulation on behalf of the town is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, uh, just uh, as an <clears throat> explanation, this was a property that was purchased for $115,000 and it was being assessed for $225,000. We made a negotiation not to bring it all the way down to what the purchase price was, but at 150 or 160. Uh, 160. 150 so we're, we're actually getting a better deal even though I know that they've improved the property since they purchased it when they when they purchased it it was a, a, a open it field. was in bad bad shape um, anyway um, so she would have under normal circumstances probably lowered it but now that it's improved so this kind of takes it out because once you make a settlement you're locked in for three years so we're kind of bound by this for three years she can't go and change it unless they make any uh, substantial changes so um, this is pretty good deal for the town so I just wanted to mention that mm -hmm. okay any more discussion no. all in favor aye. Aye. aye motion carried okay these next two are annual trainings I make a motion to approve Chris Giuliano attending the annual training in Albany, January 15th through 17th, 2020, at the cost not to exceed $900. Is there a second? Second. Uh, just a little discussion. New members to the board avail themselves of going to Albany to sort of get a three-day crash course on how to run government. It's basically what that is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. <coughs> Next one is, I make a motion to approve Ray Oberly attending annual New York State <laughs> training February 16th through 19th, 2020 at a cost not to exceed $1,250 and appoint Ray Oberly as town voting representative at the annual meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, let me just hit my notes here on this thing. Oh, here it is. Next one is a credit card. Uh, currently, the town has only a cr Chase credit card. In order to keep all our financial pr processing in one bank, I propose establishing a M&T credit card and when appropriate, close the Chase credit card. In other words, when no more bills are coming through. So it'll be a couple months to clear that. That's what I'm trying to do here. 
I make a motion to approve the following resolution. Be it resolved that the town board approves obtaining an m and credit card and closing the Chase card at the appropriate time. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Any other old business items here? Okay, then we'll go into resignations and appointments. And, uh, Okay, we have a lot. So um, I'd ask that the town board accept the resignation of Todd Martin as HMEO effective 123119. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Town board accept the resignation of Chris Giuliano for the ZBA effective 123119. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Town board accept the resignation of Chris Giuliano as a member of the BAR, effective 12 31 19. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town board accept the resignation of Don Empert as this, the maintenance worker, effective 12 4 two, uh, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board accept the resignation of April Tompkins, Highway Clerk, effective 1231, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then we have a couple of uh, new appointments. Uh, I ask that the Town Board appoint Theron Tompkins, Jr. to the position of HMEO, effective January 1, 2020, at the rate of pay 2196. Twenty-one dollars and ninety-six cents per hour. Is there a second? Second. I got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't he be coming in as an MEO till he shows that he can work all the equipment? No, he's already qualified as an HMEO in all of his previously current jobs. I understand, but okay. We were saying an HMEO requires to be. He able will be on six months probation. No, I understand but that. But no, he's got all the qualifications, proven qualifications. And I've done my homework. Right. I've gone to his past I, courses. I know what you did. I'm okay. just questioning that it's not an MEO. Uh, that he, was all. He, he's an HMEO. He's as qualified, if not more so. So, than so he knows how to use a cherry picker. He knows how to do all the equipment that we have, yes. Hmm, that's unusual. Okay. Anybody in, ready to vote? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the last one is the appointment of Melissa Karchmer, sorry about that, uh, to the uh, position of clerk in the highway department, December 1st, 2019, for the uh, rate of pay of $18 an hour for a period of 10 hours per week. Second, is that December 1st or is that January 1st? December 1st. We're trying to do the... Uh, the uh, transition, and so we're doing that this month, okay. as soon as this is uh, approved, and it'll carry over into January. Uh, we can't do that, because we only have one position there. This has to be a temporary position, starting with a date and ending with a date. Okay, well. Would it still be the same rate of pay? So that's the, her so negotiation. Yeah. Money, uh, beginning December first right. and ending, ending January or December thirty-first. Her position to yeah. clerk temporary. Right. Department. Okay. So let me restate that. We, we are um, looking to appoint Melissa Karmar, Kar Karshmar. Karshmar to the uh, for a temporary position as the clerk in the highway department from December first through December thirty-first. At the rate of pay of $18 per hour, and it's for 10, 10 hours per week. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carrying. And then you would need to do it for January 1st. So we'll okay. get her in the reorg. We'll get her in the reorg. We'll get her in the reorg. Want to do that there. at the yeah. organization? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Approval of warrants. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see it. You're ready. <laughs> oh, all the way back. Attached. You get a special one. Thank you. 
Make a, make a motion be resolved. The town board approves the December 10th, 2019 general fund warrant vouchers 507 through 547, totaling $19,545.80. And the December 10th, 2019 highway fund warrant vouchers 269 through 290, totaling $67,841.40. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approves resolution number of 2019, a motion to move funds at the December 10th, 2019 meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Supervisor's report. I make a motion that the town board approves the November 2019 supervisor's report. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Any more yeah, one, business here that we want to one discuss? One question before? only because I'm looking at the resolution to move money, um, and it just sparked me to think about this. Did we shut off the uh, garbage pickup at the uh, yes. parks? Thank yes. you. In fact, we, in Friends Park, we removed the dumpster because we can't secure the can't park. Can't lock it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. I would also like to just take the opportunity to thank Elliot. Uh, when a very, very young, young, energetic man came on this board two years ago <laughs> with very little uh, experience, Elliot gave a lot of guidance and advice. <laughs> and I want to thank him for that and yes. for all of his service for years to this town. Yes. So we have him to blame, right? <laughs> we do. <laughs> Okay, we, anybody <laughs> going to do public discussion next? Okay, I just want to know that so I can open it. I make a motion to open the meeting to public discussion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, you all know the rules. Come on, talk into the microphone and um, identify your name and where you live. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Chris Giuliano, Center Road, and Councilman Alec. Um, so just wanted to, on uh, Councilman uh, Whitman, uh, when, um, about the WIC. So I did attend the uh, meeting on, uh, in November, and it's basically about uh, they were having, going over some of their studies that they found with the watershed going down into the Wattingers Lake and the village of Wattingers. Uh, there was towns that were represented everywhere from Pine Plains all the way down to Fishkill. Uh, within that, uh, Mayor Matt Alexander of the village of Wattingers, uh, uh, got some funding to try to put uh, some uh, programs together that some of the towns might be able to use up here as pilot programs try to, to try to, to help. microphone over or something yeah how's that uh, to help uh, obviously protect the uh, Wattingers Lake there to where pilot programs if we have ideas um, that we can bring up in the January meeting and uh, he's looking to be able to spend some of that money or give us or local towns some money to uh, try to put uh, these pilot programs together to help the watershed and uh, they're going to carry that on a little bit more in January so that's basically the concept of what the meeting was all right thank you thank you thank you anyway okay. next next one hi I'm Patricia Smith 93 Deer Ridge Drive and I'm going to talk about Deer Ridge Drive <laughs> basically I need help I'm going to have to read this because I cannot talk in front of people without having a heart attack. Okay, so I come here tonight to discuss a serious problem that I'm having with my neighbor. She is constantly, and I mean constantly, videotaping the outside of my house when I first light my wood stove. She also has videotaped me bringing in wood from my barn. I have called the town many times, and they have said there is nothing they can do. So they said to call the police. I called the police. The police came over. There is nothing they can do. My house was built in 1973 and has always had a wood stove. I have lived here since 2007. Never once was there a complaint or a conversation with anybody about my stove or the previous stoves in the house until 2015. Now, this was built in 1973. Most of you all know what has transpired on Deer Ridge Drive over the past few years. 
The original problem was solved by the court case in 2015, but the harassment by my neighbor to the south has only gotten worse. I totally understand that my wood stove is legal and that I have every right to use it. However, she complains that the smoke from my chimney drifts into her yard, causing her distress. Unfortunately, I cannot control the wind or the weather. She must have a camera poised on my chimney and be constantly watching it because she is outside within mere minutes of me starting it. I never start at the same time because I don't have to. I'm retired. As per the sheriff's deputy's suggestion, I have taken a couple of pictures of her videotaping my chimney. I have them on my phone. Please remember, this is within five minutes of me starting a cold stove. Not half an hour later. A few years ago, she told me I should remove my new and quite expensive wood stove and replace it with a pellet stove. So, being a good neighbor, I looked into it. Sorry, I found out that making pellets from wood is much more unsustainable than burning logs, since they take so much more energy and fuel to make them. On top of that, pellet stoves run on electricity. One of the reasons a lot of us use wood stoves in this area is because of the frequent power outages. The second year I lived here, I had a power outage dis disrupted my power for over a week. I seriously don't think any of us has to justify the use of a wood stove. Truthfully, I find it kind of comical about her obsession with my stove, but her constant documented harassment towards the town, the other neighbors, and myself is extremely disturbing. It's disturbing because she applied for a handgun permit last year. Uh, let, Unbeknownst let, to let's me, let's not get too until personal. Until February this year, please let me talk. No, this is very disturbing. Okay, I, I, I am frightened to be living where I am. We don't talk about handguns here. Well, be that as it may, it's not about hunting. She got it for not for hunting. She abhors hunting. Okay. I don't know. Too that. bad the references did not include her neighbors, who all have told her to get help because she believes we all believe she is unstable. I'm frightened. The problem goes on, but I'll be brief. The rest of the problems are, one, she feeds the deer daily. She feeds her horses and throws the feed over the fence to the deer. Twelve years of my plantings have been destroyed. My property is being devalued because of their unsightly yard, so I put up a privacy fence. I had to pay for it. And why won't she let the town inspector on her property? You guys have to now get a court order to get on her property, don't you? Diesel fumes from her trucks left running for hours. I could go on and on, but you don't want to sit here that long. I moved to this town because of its beauty, its offers of seclusion, peace, and quiet. I have survived a 30-year marriage, three kids, breast cancer twice. I ran a farm of over 100 animals and was a 4-H leader for 33 years. Now I have to live in fear because I live next door to an unstable person who is harassing and bullying me about my wood stove? In my, in my town, and the, my, if my town and the police are unable to protect, protect a law-abiding citizen, then who will? Will you all wait until she snaps and I just might become her victim? No one deserves to live in fear when they are on the right side of the law. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Russ. Russ Tompkins, Schultzville. I didn't want to disappoint you, so I figured I'd come up and say hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, a few questions. <clears throat> I, I, I mentioned cemeteries, and when Elliot said you had two burials over in Pleasant Plains, I know that Schultzville Cemetery always closed up in the winter and didn't allow burials because one time they had somebody go in there with a truck and it slid out of the roadway and knocked over gravestones and caused a lot of damage and with the ground being soft and muddy and so they didn't have burials and I don't know if that's something still in effect Elliot or not but it is something to be considered because it's potentially damaging. M my <coughs> I, I did raise that issue actually in the course of a conversation with the people at uh, excuse me, at Cole Rockley, and apparently n nowadays they dig pretty much, except in extreme cold, they can dig 
virtually all year round. And I don't know necessarily Schultzville. I know Pleasant Plains. I've seen them actually at work. <coughs> they don't. Bring, there are several driveways, so they don't bring the heavy trucks into the area where the stones are. And so I haven't seen any damage. Yeah. Well, years ago they went in by the church hall down here. Yeah. And got mired in the mud and, and really? yeah. did damage by hitting gravestones and I guess they had to pull them out and they had all the ruts through the Was that area. before they had the access in the back? Do you know? Well, I don't know, but you, you don't want to go up in the back with anything heavy because no. you just got grass up there and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a mess. Be a toboggan. And I, I was up there the other day putting wreaths on cemeteries, yeah. Yeah. on graves. My wife loves to support the Boy Scouts. <clears throat> so I did notice, and I don't know how this happened, but I did notice some, a stone there that had no uh, foundation under it. It's just sitting on the ground, you know, and it's a small stone, and I went over and actually rocked it with my foot. And that's a very important thing, that stones should not be put in there without foundations. Absolutely, no. And yeah, that, that must have been done years ago before. No, it's, <clears throat> it's a stone within the last oh, two no. years because it's all the way in the back, and there's three new graves there. Shouldn't have been done without a foundation. Where is it, in the back? Back left. If you go that back driveway Why and come in, to work it okay. out after right. yeah, you're going to see three stones in a row there, and okay. the, All right. the one is okay. Now I don't know how you're proceeding because I know you were kind of handling the cemeteries, and I've said all along you need more than one person there to cover these things. I don't know. I think Ray is looking for volunteers for some kind of group, but you, it, it's when you need it, you need it, you know, and it's a difficult thing. My mother did it until she died, and my wife did it, and it's like, that's why nobody's doing it anymore. <clears throat> now, I'm going to ask you a question that I thought was covered a long time ago. Does the town have a, a fund that you set aside for equipment replacement? Every so many years, you replace vehicles. I think this last snowstorm, the rear end fell out of one of your trucks, mm -hmm. and it's a 94. I couldn't believe you got a 25-year-old truck still on the road. Those trucks are subject to salt and you know, a lot of wear. It's not like my personal truck 25 years. It's, it's like a truck under extreme stress. And I thought you had a fun where after every so many years, you got rid of the oldest truck and replaced it with a newer one. We have, we have talked about this several years ago. We said we tried to do a truck every other year to replace the, the trucks that are 20 some years old. Uh, we did replace a truck <coughs> last year but we we didn't, will not have the funds to replace one this year. We've got to look at I was cars. just amazed that it was 25 years old and still on the road as a heavy piece of equipment, you know? Well, and like I, I say, the, the salt and sand and stuff, I guess the rear spring broke, you know? It's, it's no longer usable, but <coughs> I will say in the past, what Theron had done is he would, any truck we had to take off, he would cannibalize enough to rebuild the trucks and keep them running. But we're at the point now where that truck is no longer yeah. usable. Well, matter of fact, I asked him, I said, there's another one out behind all the wood pile. I said, has that got a good rear end in it? <laughs> but people don't do that stuff anymore. I still do stuff like that, but people don't want to do that. Uh, I will mention in this thing that you were looking at before on the agricultural events, I go along with Dean saying he doesn't agree with increasing it to 500 and I guess we can override that you need a vote of four instead of three but I also on the, the as brought up by Mr. Perola there that changing it from 75 acres to 10 acres in, in the second page I think is is way too lenient maybe the county wants it but you know the county don't live here uh, again the uh, the the county is going off of what the state regs are and to be considered an ag, ag exemption is 10 acres. So it's $10,000 or 10 acres. It can be less than 10 acres uh, with $10,000, but I think what they're going off of is the state regs. Yeah. So um, that's why they brought it down. But, um, you know, one of the things that we put in there was that uh, the population uh, for attending any of these events should should match the acreage so that you know maybe it's one person for 10 acres and you know kind of like the horses the same thing you know <laughs> the first two acres you can have one horse and and so on and so forth and and so probably should match something like that well you got a ho your horse mouth there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know so certainly 
but as you're mentioning that uh, having 200 people on 10 acres would not be appropriate okay uh, and and that's really where the planning part department would come in and make those decisions well I guess you're lucky I'm done good anybody else yeah come oh. on up no, you got to come, come up. To the you you got to come on up. Okay, my name is Denise Stellman, and there's something. No, that, you got to talk there. So my that. name is Denise Stellman, and I'm really having a problem with something, sir. You said that when the gun was brought up, it's a personal thing. Guns are a very important issue, and people seem to neglect that. Guns are, should, are supposed to be used under certain circumstances. It's very frightful when somebody seems unstable and has a pistol. You don't know what that person's gonna do. Pat lives alone, out in the woods. I would be afraid too. That is not an issue that should be dismissed. If it was dismissed, look at all the things that are happening, because nobody thinks anything can happen. When somebody seems unstable, like she said, there is a very frightening problem. How would you feel, madam? How would you feel about that? It, it's not that we're dismissing it. Okay, but I feel it was dismissed because you said it has nothing to do with this, sir. It, and it, it shouldn't be- It has nothing to do with town government? It has to do with what can you do for this person who's afraid, who's gone to the police and has, and has called the town. It has a lot to do. This is her town and she lives here because she feels safe. This is a big issue. What can you do for her? Is there anything you can help her with so nothing does happen, so this woman gets off her back? I mean, who in the world goes and spies on somebody like this? This is not a normal thing. What does, I, she, what does she do in the winter? Open her windows all day? No. She has fumes around and she has the nerve to, I mean, that's all she has to do? It's frightening. I don't want anything to happen to anybody with something like this. There's got to be something you can do for her. That's what, that's what I'm up here to say. It, it just, it's, it's scary. It's very scary. Okay, and that's you. what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Denise. <clears throat> Denise Trust Deer Ridge. Is this thing even working tonight? Because it, it just seems like it hasn't been working. Talk I, into I, it. You're not close enough. To oh, because I haven't heard anybody all night on this thing. Um, this obviously, uh, this uh, this is related to this everything being Tell scratched. That's what it is. Uh, the agricultural events okay. law. Everything is crossed off on here, but I want to say something because I didn't get a chance to read this entire thing, is that since August, I believe, when everyone was talking about the, the major and collector roads, it's all crossed off, even though everybody objected to it. So I'm going to assume that this is the county telling you you have to cross this off or something, Dean? No, um, it's, it's basically twofold. One is um, this separated out, what we did was we merged the old uh, conference center dude ranch in with this event law. So we were actually eliminating the old conference center dude ranch law and merging it in with this new ag conference law. And that's now been re-pulled out. So um, the items that are read, and we were just, Carol and I were just briefly talking about what are we going to present on the, uh, the town website. Um, having the red line may be a little bit more complicated in the sense that um, you're just looking at the content that is not read out. Um, the read out typically says, this is the way, the way the law was, and here's the change. There was no law, so hence there really shouldn't be any read out because this is a whole new law to be presented. Um, so some of the read out are changes because of what the county has d discussed with the attorney, and some of them are read out because we separated out the conference center. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, granted, I didn't have time to just really read this tonight, mm -hmm. but there's so much scratched out, and I know the concern is because, especially the Schultz Hill situation, yep. since that's obviously closest to those of us, you know, on Deer Ridge as well as obviously Schultz Hill, is that when, when that's not, you know, the, the 
uh, major collector road and th that meeting that you were explaining to a couple people that then they could apply for a variance and da -da -da, if, if it were to pass in that form. But also Jack, who's a retired attorney, said if you don't have the, you're, we're gonna have, I guess the way to surmise this is we're gonna have such a major, major traffic problem as it is and we were trying to avoid this somewhat, but. Well, but it, it, you know, again, you know, there's supposed to be some checks and balances in here, and, and certainly this, that will be part of the public discussion, so you can have an opportunity to f fully read the whole document. But um, some of the check and balance is that you, you either are a farm, and you have to meet the definition of 305A as to what a farm is to meet that definition. If you are, pretty much the state is going to side with you. I mean, that's really the bottom line is. So even if we pass a law, if you match what the definition of a farm and whether you're having a bar or whatever you want to call it, the state's going to side with you because as long as you're selling your agricultural products, you have a right to do it as far as what state agricultural law says. If you don't meet that, you have to have 50,000 worth of revenue. Well, that's a big threshold, as any farmer will tell you, to, to meet $50,000 of, of revenue is, is, is not a small operation. I don't know the one that you're talking about. I don't want to talk specifics, but it seems like it's a, it's a high enough bar, uh, you know, level to, to achieve that it should eliminate somebody who's doing these hobby farms or something like that and trying to do event centers. Well, I think it was in, in reference to like even what Carol was explaining that, you know, traffic and noise as we've discussed I, many I times over all those things. and this whole thing it's it's like since august everyone like i said jack being an attorney and stuff and went over and really said how important this this part of a document is and you even agreed with jack and now it's all crossed out and and as other people in the audience have said you know we're the people who are the taxpayers who live here who have to these this is our homes it's, it's not the county's home i was ready to pass the last document so. i know but i'm just <laughs> saying that somebody has to be a little bit tough going up against the county i mean there, there has to be you know like you said you, you keep saying that our attorney shane is working on it but it's dragging on meeting to meeting and i know we haven't even gotten to short-term rentals because of this the ag law thing dragging and you know so we're wondering if any, <laughs> I can't help it, but I, it's, I just feel like nothing is getting solved for some, some of the major things. I mean, without sidetracking in the zoning thing, and we all, Nancy and I, but um, you know, just even, even the de by definition, you know. Well, every, every other Thursday, we have our zoning revision, and we, we other than when we had our, uh, our budget uh, you know, meetings, we've been holding, we're about halfway done with the, uh, the town, uh, rezonings as, as far as so that goes. Those of us so here don't say nothing's being done. I well, understand that there's certain topics such as event law, such as short-term rentals, that they were never laws to begin with. So we're starting from from scratch and trying I don't to make- know if I would say nothing's being done. I would say that when it's like two steps forward, one step back is a better example of that because it was such a strong point people made about the yep. county and collector. It was so strong. Like I said, there was attorneys here, everything since August. And now to, to take that out, it's like there there's the two steps back. You know what I mean? It's like just what we think, okay, this is gonna stand. Now it doesn't stand anymore. Yep. And there's not one person in this room who hasn't got up and said, look, we live here. This is our life. We pay a lot of taxes to live here. You know. The county, forget this. I mean, if you want us to have a, a letter to the county for all of us to sign for those of us who live here, that's a whole other thing. No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I just, I, you know, there's unfortunately the reality of the thing. So, you know, let's take your instance out of, of the, the equation. You know, we have other event, uh, or we have other places that have events, right. such as the uh, Mil, uh, not the Milbrook, but the, the Clinton Winery. And they're not on a major collector road either. So they would also be in the position where they would sue us. They would most likely win, and we would have to allow it. I would say that I know this is taking a long time, and it's frustrating. <laughs> However. I know. I've been on the phone with everyone. It's going to be frustrating right now, but the process we're going through is going to make it so that we get a law, I think, that will be most likely to pass muster. And not be challenged. And not be challenged and not right. get now overturned. Because if I've we took this time and passed something that then got overturned, we'd be at square one. 
Now, you and I have discussed this, so I, I do know what it is, but that's why I was trying to just focus on that one area of what I was saying about the, the major collector road, only because so many people, mm -hmm. I mean, one after another, I've, I've been at these meetings, I've seen people get up that are upset because the traffic is so out of control. It, it, I've never seen it like this, and I've lived here 28 years, and it's really gotten bad. So, all right, that's what I'm going to say tonight on that. Thanks, Denise. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Anyone else? Oh, okay. Christina Magney from the law firm of Young Summer in Albany on behalf of my client, Stephen Simcock, who's a resident of the town. Uh, this is also regarding the event center law. Oh, okay. I only received a copy this afternoon, so I haven't had a chance to go over all of the new revisions with my client, but I do just want to, the board is still accepting public uh, written comments. We're gonna have a public hearing next month. Next month, but you're, the, you're still gonna accept written comments of beforehand? Of okay, you can so. have it all, all the way up until that day. I mean. Okay, so we, I will be uh, submitting, once I speak to my client, some written comments, but one thing I did notice that hasn't been changed from the last law that we did comment on is that the boundaries from the parking areas and the event areas are still being measured from the neighboring residents instead of the neighboring property line. So that's mm -hmm. one thing that we're hoping mm -hmm. the board will consider. But other than that, I appreciate everyone's time and effort on this law and I understand that it's been very difficult for everyone. So sure. thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep. Ernestine. <laughs> Ernestine Martin, 197 Shelts Hill Road. I've been listening home and here, and I think Shelts Hill is getting a, you know, a bad name. Shelts Hill is a wonderful road. And I bet a lot of people here don't realize there was a post office on Shelts Hill Road. Did you know that for many, many years? Mm -hmm. Did you know there's a cave up on the mountain mm -hmm. off of Shelts Hill Road? And my grandchildren who live on Shelts Hill Road, well, three of them are in college when they're home, they do, live on Shelts Hill Road, as my children did, as my husband was born in the farmhouse on Shelts Hill Road 78 years ago. It is a good road, and good things have happened on that road. Many, many, many years ago, my father-in-law decided to sell off sections, parts of the farm. The one section was on the northeast piece of the property. A young couple from Pleasant Valley came up, and they had three young boys. They wanted to walk through the property. Go ahead. And about Half an hour, both parents came running out. They had lost a child, a little boy about four years old. They couldn't find him. Dad thought he was with mom. Mom thought he was with dad. The call went out for help. Some of my boys called friends of theirs who had ATVs or whatever you call them to come down and look for this little boy. The state police were called. In a short period of time, a helicopter was brought in. Now, all the guys that were there from Milan, Red Hook, Rhinebeck, didn't know this family, but a little boy was missing. That's all they had to know on Shelts Hill Road. My husband was not there, and, and the troopers asked who knew the property, the farm, but Bill was not home and they asked for volunteers. One of my sons said he would go in the helicopter to look for this little boy. And I was shaking when I saw my son get in this helicopter. In a matter of maybe 15, 20 minutes, the little boy was found and was brought back to his parents. And in the meantime, the houses from Deer Ridge Going down Chelts Hill to Fiddler's Bridge were searched. They even searched our barns looking for this little boy. My son spotted the little boy, gave the direction 
to the state police helicopter, pilot who was driving it, whatever you call it, and the little boy was brought back. My son who found that little boy is now your highway superintendent. I'm not giving him any brownie points, but I'm just saying <laughs> it was Shelts Hill Road, and there are good people, good families on Shelts Hill Road. The couple decided not to buy the property. The mother, of course, as any mother would be, was emotion was just distraught. And she felt that buying that property and living there, she would go over and over. So that property, and they, they never came back. What's happening on Shelts Hill Road now is not the whole length of Shelts Hill Road from the boundary of the town of Rhinebeck coming over the bridge into Shelts Hill to f out to Fiddler's Bridge. I counted roughly about 30, 32 houses, people who live on that road, either full-time or part-time. The majority of the people on Shelts Hill Road are not saying anything about the event center. I live across the street from it. Is there noise? Yes. But my neighbors make more noise than that venue did. I was sick for three and a half weeks with pneumonia. And Thanksgiving, I had to stay home alone, which I wanted to, and my son had the family dinner at his house. And there were fireworks. And they did not come from the ag venture across from me. It was another neighbor. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> do what you want, but it's not the majority of the people on Shelts Hill Road that are against this ag. Okay. I thank the board. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Ernestine. Someone else? Yeah. Carol? Carol Hughes, 220 Schultz Hill Road. Only takes one bad apple to make that carton bad. And it might not bother some people, the party venue place, because there's probably some way or other a buck being made. No, don't give me that. That's a great place. And as far as the fireworks and things, yeah. I've got the wood stove in that same place. Somebody's burning. I put up with it. I got dogs that I had to call the people because... I got a roofer putting a roof on. The dog came out to get it. I had to complain. So, you know, there's a couple of bad apples on that road. And the party venue is a big one. Thank you. I feel like tonight's turning into a soap opera, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's... But sorry, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I had to say that. I mean, it just feels like, first of all, it just, I just have to address a few things. The, the whole thing with Schultz Hill is not to say anybody's a bad person, Ernestine. I've known you. I, I know Scott. I know Carol. I, I, <laughs> there, there's bad things happen on every road, as my neighbor just pointed out. You know, we're, we're all, there's good and bad people, and there's good and bad situations. I, I think that's, we we're, we're pretty much all understand that. I, when I get up here specifically, I'm not putting down a, a specific person. I'm trying to put, a, um, from my vantage point where I, I'm walking and I'm seeing things, I don't live there. So people could say, well, why does it matter? But the traffic is affecting us on Deer Ridge because, as Michael, you know, with we have the, the, sh uh, the short-term rentals. So it's a lot of things trickle down in a circle here. But I don't want any misconfusion. Uh, any confusion that I don't personally am saying I have something against anybody on Schultz Hill Road. I just, I walk all the time, so I'm constantly on Schultz Hill and I'm doing walks all the time. So I see what's going on and I get along with most people. But I just want to clarify because it seems to be now this is neighbors and neighbors and who, who is for and who is against. And, you know, and I, like I said, I know these people have lived here long enough and I don't want what I presented here, bringing up major and collector roads and this event venue to have any bearing on other neighbors fighting with each other over something that I said when I'm just 
you know, might say, well, she's not even on Schultz Hill, so why is she saying this? That, that's kind of like what I'm gathering tonight, that wait a minute here, this is going the wrong direction, and before it ends up going the wrong direction, I think we need a little peace here before the holidays, so that's what, that's what I want to say. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, last call. I make a motion to return to regular order of business. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Any more business before the board? Nope. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried.